Welcome everyone! In this video, we are going to be diving into my ultimate tier list for the Ultra League. I did one for the Great League not too long ago, and the Ultra League is now underway, so wanted to give you guys a good um, idea of what to prioritize for your Ultra League builds, as I know many of you are still um, looking to build out your Ultra League roster. So there's no better way to accomplish that than with a good old tier list. And I'm sure many of you are all familiar with how these work. But for those of you who have never seen one of these, we are going to be ranking um, most of the Ultra League meta um in each of these tiers so we have the s tier that is the absolute best of the best most effective pokemon to use in the ultra league uh, and then that's followed by the a tier the b tier so on and so forth um and uh that is how these work and again um i cannot there's no way that i could possibly cover the entirety of all that is available with the Ultra League, we would literally be here for hours. So if it's not on this list, my friends, just assume that it is not worth mentioning. It is um, Omega level spice, if you will, um, and it's not worth mentioning. So with all of that out of the way, we make our way to first up here. We've got Obama Snow. Uh, Obama Snow, very effective Pokemon in this meta um handles the if you can handle water and um uh flyers to an extent most notably pidgeot um you're going to be doing really really well obama snow sort of floats between a and b tier um i'm gonna i'm gonna go ahead and say b tier but it could easily be an a tier ice type uh probably top three in the entirety of the ultra league but this is a very clutch pokemon has play up against Cresselia as well. Um, handles Giratina, handles Swampert. You shut down Swampert. You've got play up against uh, Charizard, Pidgeot. Obama Snow is an amazing investment to make uh, for the Ultra League. And we make our way to Altaria. Um, there are just better um, dragons, better flyers in the meta. Although the stat product is quite impressive on Altaria, it doesn't quite get to the 2,500 CP. In fact, it is well below that. It's at right around 2,100, 2,200 or so. Um, that's sort of a luxury build. Um, if you want a dragon flying type, you just go with Dragonite. Plain and simple, guys. And then we've got Articuno. Articuno is a very strong Pokemon, quite bulky. It's a B-tier ice type slash flyer. Um, you get the icy wind with stab and you can fight back against the opposing flyers with ancient power. Um, uh, Articuno, very underutilized, uh, and underrated in the, uh, ultra league. And we've got Aurora's here. Aurora's is an A tier ice type guys. It has the, it has a awful, awful typing, but the move set is absolutely off the charts for Aurora's has access to meteor beam with stab guaranteed um, a chance to buff your attack as well as weather ball spam between that and powder snow um, aurora is also an excellent answer to all of the flyers and wing attack users that we have in the meta shuts down charizard shuts down pidgeot handles giratina what more could you ask for you just keep it away from those water types and the fighters of course and then we've got uh beware beware is quite spicy um, not the bulkiest Pokemon around. It's a decent normal type. Um, it's just, uh, the stat product is, it's what's holding it back. It's a little squishy. And speaking of squishy, same goes for Blaziken. Very much suited for the specialty formats, uh, Blaziken. Uh, just a little too frail. Its coverage is not all that, um, well suited for the open ultra league. It's great in premier and some of the specialty cups, but open, it's a bit spicy, a bit frail. And then we've got Buzzwool here. Buzzwool is a B tier, uh, fighter slash bug type, probably the best bug type in the entire meta. Very strong Pokemon has an excellent, uh, move pool with counter, um, has superpower lunge this thing is amazing you just have to really build around its glaring weakness of flying type damage if you can do that buzzwool can uh, put in work for sure and um sticking with the uh, ultra beast we've got celesteela quite spicy for open ultra although 
I did put in work with Celestila uh, back when we had the Ultra League, uh, the Holiday Cup Ultra League edition. That thing was amazing. It was absolutely running through the Charizards, but that is all beside the point. We're not talking about uh, Holiday Cup Ultra League edition. We're talking about Open Ultra, and in Open Ultra, Celesteela is way too spicy. There are better flyers, better steel types to go with. Uh, and then Charizard S tier 1000%. This thing is next to unstoppable. If you can give this thing a shield advantage, holy smokes, Charizard. Whether it's the normal um, Charizard or the Shadow, Shadow or non-Shadow, this thing is S-tier 1,000%. Very, very strong Pokemon, especially with a Shield Advantage and the Open Ultra League. No doubt about that. And we've got Chestnut. Chestnut's a strong Pokemon. It's just, it's a C-tier uh, Grass slash Fighter. Um, it can shut down a Stunfisk like you wouldn't believe, but... Um, there, there's a better grass fighter in this meta uh, for sure. Um, Chestnut, uh, really, if it had a better fighting type fast move, I think that would elevate it quite a bit more. But um, yeah, it, it, it struggles uh, running Vine Whip. Not that Vine Whip is a bad move at all. It's actually an excellent move. If you like wing attack, you'll love Vine Whip because they are clones of each other. But uh, yeah, that is what's holding Chestnut back. And then we've got Cobalion. That's an S tier steel slash fighter if I've ever seen one. Holy smokes. I'm quite fond of Cobalion, um, and that is for good reason. It is very powerful in this meta. Uh, that steel typing comes in so clutch. The stat product is very much well-suited for the Open Ultra League. It can absolutely put in the work. Um, tanks neutral damage from Fairy and Psychic. Uh, and has coverage on the flyers with stone edge and then you've got those spammy sacred swords with stab what more could you ask for cobalion amazing s tier 100 percent and then we've got um Cofagrigus here Cofagrigus is a c tier ghost type could easily be b tier as well um it's just with all the Pidgeots and all the normal types in general, but particularly Pidgeot and opposing dark types, um, it is absolutely helpless against any dark type in this meta. Um, that is what's holding it back. If it can get a better coverage move, we, that might change for Cofagrigus, but it has an amazing stat product. It has the best fast move in the entire game known as Shadow Claw, but it, it's struggling. It needs a better coverage move um, to elevate itself um, up a little higher here. And then we've got Cresselia as S tier, 100%, an absolute staple of the Open Ultra League, and that is not changing anytime soon. Um, my, correct me if I'm wrong, guys, but I do believe it is the bulkiest Pokemon in the entire meta. Um, Reggie, a fully excelled Reggie is right up there as well in terms of bulk, but, uh, Cresselia, amazing Pokemon, has amazing coverage with the legacy grass knot on those water types, as well as being able to hit those dark types, those dragons for super effective. And if you really want to fight back against, um, some, some, uh, fire types, you can run future sight. Cresselia, amazing. And we've got defense form Deoxys, a tier, uh, psychic here. Much more of a pseudo fighter. Very strong Pokemon, quite bulky as we can all imagine. Uh, Defense form Deox is very good. Um, excellent steel type counter, excellent uh, dark type counter to an extent. Um, mostly Obstagoon and Scrafty, but uh, it could struggle up against a Mandibuzz or a. Um, uh, Umbreon, but uh, Giratina is a problem as well. So is Cresselia. That's why it's not S tier, guys. But other than that, it's a very good Pokemon. You have to have the right team behind it. And then we've got Dragalge. Dragalge. Oh, it's a C tier dragon slash poison. Unfortunately, I'm so sad to say. Um, the problem with Dragalge is um, there are a lot of steel types in this meta. Uh, there are a lot of opposing dragons in this meta and having to get to that big outrage to threaten uh, anything in this meta is what's holding it back. It needs something better than Aqua Tail, I think. Um, pre preferably something with Stab. Twister is not the answer either. <laughs> we need help for Dragalge, and that is what's holding it back. And then we've got Dragonite here. My goodness, man. I'm going to go ahead and say A tier. A tier uh, dragon 
slash flying type in the meta. Uh, superpower has worked wonders for Dragonite. Those steel types now have to think twice with Dragonite um, when they're faced up against Dragonite. This thing is amazing. Just got to keep it away from those ice and charmers, and Dragonite can absolutely go on a rampage in the Ultra League. And we've got Drapion here. Um, Drapion, sort of between uh, A and B tier. I'll give it the respect of A tier. It's an amazing safe swap. Probably one of the better safe swap options you can go with. And that is because its only weakness is uh, ground type damage. And uh, you've got great coverage on the fairies with Sludge Bomb. Or you could choose to go the Aqua Tail route and fight back against those fire types. Really throw them off guard. Drapion, quite bulky. Uh, the perfect package, if you will, in terms of stats. This thing is awesome. Uh, Drapion, excellent poison dark type. And we've got Drift Blim here. Um, Drift Blim sort of floats between C and D tier. I will give it the respect of C tier here. Um, it's just, there are just better ghost types. Uh, Shadow Claw is the premier fast attack, uh, if you want to deal ghost type damage. Um, it's just a little slow in the meta. Um, even with the Mystical Fire update, I think, honestly, I would still lean toward Icy Wind in the Ultra League, at least. Um, that's just my preference. But, uh, yeah, there are just better ghost and flying types than Drift Blim, unfortunately. And we've got Dubwool here. Oh, man, Dubwool. Sort of between A and B tier. Um, I'm going to go ahead and say B tier, but it could easily be A tier as well. Um, I'm just going Obstagoon. If I want that type of coverage, I'm just going to run Obstagoon. Um, but it does have Body Slam, and that is what holds Obstagoon back. Uh, although I don't believe it has access to Body Slam in the mainline series. Um, has Wild Charge as well. Um, yeah, I I'm going to go ahead and say A tier. I sort of uh, convinced myself. But it floats between that A and B tier. Um, very good Pokemon. Um, very, very solid. Has Wild Charge as well if you want to uh, mix it up a little bit. And we've got Empoleon. Empoleon's a C tier steel slash water type. Uh, again, there are just better steel and water types in the meta. If I want a good water type, I'm going Swampert 100%. Um, uh, if I want a good steel type, I'm going with Reggie Steel. Uh, so that is where uh, Empoleon is. It's still it's still decent. It just struggles up against the titans of the meta, most notably uh, Cresselia, Giratina, and then we've got the Swords of Justice that are now in the meta. Empoleon has just seen better days in the Ultra League. And we've got, uh, moving along to S Cavalier, sort of floats between B and C tier. I will give it the respect of B tier. Uh, if you can keep it away from those fire types, my goodness, look out. This thing can go on a rampage. Has excellent coverage with Drill Run. Uh, Mega Horns hit like an absolute truck. You have to have the right team behind it. Um, you don't want to be going, finding yourself up against a Giratina or a Charizard or anything like that. So if you can address that, S Cavalier can put in work. And we've got Galvantula moving right along here. It's, uh, again... Uh, pretty decent a lot of people love using their ultra league galvantulas i get it. it 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 does well against tapu fini does does somewhat well up against charizard beats charizard tapu fini but it 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 gets a little hard walled with all the giratinas but it's still really good uh it's a decent pokemon you have to have the right team that's just it you have to address giratina um and all other dragons to be honest um as well as the steel types like stunfisk so that's sort of it's it's bug typing and that electric typing sort of hold it back a little bit as well as its stats it's not great stat product at least is not great and we've got gingar here gingar is super spicy these days and i uh, it's i'm shocked to hear myself say that because once upon a time gingar was hyper ultra league meta but Times have changed. There are better ghost types that have come along since. And Gengar, the stat product, is what's really holding this thing back. It is so frail. But my goodness, does it hit like a truck. There are just better poison um, or ghost types to choose. Uh, speaking of ghost types, Giratina is S tier 1000%, much like Cresselia. It's been an absolute staple of the Open Ultra League from just about day one. My goodness, uh, this thing, uh, what more do we need to say? We all know what's up with Giratina. It's about as good as it gets. And moving right along, we've got uh, Gliscor. 
Um, last season it was a lot stronger, but I would have, I would have maybe said A tier, but it's sort of slash B slash uh, C tier. I'll give the respect of B tier. They're just um, some new players in the meta, most notably um, Alolan Sandslash. We still have all sorts of ice types all over the place as well. Um, that's just the problem. It's a very ice heavy meta right now. Um, and the, the water types, forget about it. Tapu Fini, um, uh, Swampert. So you do, that's another one where you really just have to have the right team. And I'm not thrilled that it can't really do it's, it does technically beat Cresselia, but it's not comfortable. It should be a lot more comfortable. It's just those night slashes that don't have stab just fall a little flat. They don't, they're not, they don't have enough oomph on them, if you know what I mean, guys. Uh, so yeah, um, that is, that is, uh, Glide score B tier for sure. And then we've got Greedon. Greedon is thoroughly underutilized, quite accessible as well. Um, I'm going to, it could be A tier. I'm serious. I'm not kidding. But I will say B tier. Um, it has excellent coverage on um, the Giratinas of the world as well as the Cresselias. I don't see nearly as many Greedents as I think I should be seeing. This thing is absolutely powerful. Yes, it is an XL, but we've had Squovitz all over the place, guys. I've got an XL Greedent, and I could build another one if I wanted to. I might even be able to build two more. Um, so I'm not sure there's an excuse for not having an XL Greedent or not to run it. Um, uh, it's a it's an amazing water type or uh, normal type, excuse me, to use in the Open Ultra League. Um, very strong. Could easily be A tier. And we've got uh, Guzzlord here. Guzzlord is a B tier Dark Dragon, and I'm... The only reason why is because those Swords of Justice are all over the place, um, as well as other dragons like Dragonite. Although these the Dragon Tails from Guzzlord do chunk, um, but the fighters are all over the place. The ice types are all over the place, uh, so that makes it very difficult to run um, Guzzlord in the meta, unfortunately. But it is very strong. You have to have the right team. Very strong Pokemon. Uh, and then we've got Gyarados. Gyarados is a C tier water slash flying type. Again, uh, there is better water types in the meta. And again, much like uh, Gengar and Polion, there was once upon a time where uh, Gyarados was hardcore, hyper open um, Ultra League meta. But there are just better answers. And a lot of people are running these electric types now, which is really rough for Gyarados, most notably Galvantula and Ampharos. And speaking of, I mentioned Ampharos. It's not even on this thing. Holy smokes. I'm so sorry, guys. I forgot Ampharos. But Ampharos would uh, be between A and B tier in case you were wondering. I'm sure some some of you were, uh, will point that out. But uh, that is where Ampharos would be. And Incineroar, extremely spicy. We will see what's up with Incineroar uh, once it gets Blast Burn on its community day, whenever that will be. Uh, but until then, it's quite spicy. There are just better dark and fire types uh, to run in the meta. And moving right along to Jellicent. My goodness. Oh, man. I almost want to put Jellicent in the S tier, but I will go ahead and say A tier. It is very strong. Um, you have to keep, you have to build around Obstagoon and Scrafty. That is the biggest struggle in terms of team building for Jellicent, as well as the electric types, the two most notable ones, again, Galvantula and uh, Ampharos. But Jellicent, so tanky, um, very good Pokemon. Surf worked wonders for Jellicent. Now uh, being able to hit um, a little bit harder for those ground types as well as the fire types handles Charizard quite well, guys. Um, and then we've got Como O, much like um, uh, um, Guzzlord here. Uh, it's a solid B tier dragon. Again, just better, better fighters, better dragon types to use in the meta. Um, if you're not experienced uh, running a Dragon Tail on Como O, knowing when to throw that uh, close combat when to bait, it can be a bit tricky. Um, uh, but again, uh, there, there are better dragon type, uh, slash fighting type options to run, but Koma, oh, very strong, very good Pokemon in general. And we've got Lantern here. Lantern's a C tier in the open ultra league, but by goodness, it can absolutely wreak havoc in the specialty cups. 
I'm so annoyed, guys. I was not able to get a hundo lan- uh, lantern the last time we had all those chin chews out. I was hunting like crazy for one, just could not get one. But yeah, um, in the o- in open, it's a hard sell, guys. We just got grass knot chrysalia all over the place. Giratina shuts it down. Swampert shuts it down. All the other dragons. But um, yeah, definitely much better suited for the specialty cups where you don't have to deal with the titans of the ultra, uh, open ultra league. And then we've moving along right on to Lapras here. Lapras very solid. It's a B tier ice slash water type. Has surf, has that ice shard. Um, you can hit pretty hard with Skull Bash. They're just better uh, water ice types to run in the uh, Open Ultra League. Uh, but still very good, very bulky, um, very very strong Pokemon. And we've got uh, Licky Licky here. Licky Licky is very good. They're just better. Um, well, I would, I'm not going to say better because it's actually one of the better normal types in the meta. There are just more cost-effective options, let's just say. Uh, but still, very interesting Pokemon. Again, I do have one lurking, guys, and I can build it. But uh, I, that investment is just far too steep for me to justify right now. Uh, but it has Shadow Ball has access to body slam as well uh very very interesting pokemon it's just uh, not quite as cost effective as other very bulky normal types that you have an option to run and then we've got lorantis that is quite spicy leafage did not do this thing any favors i was really hoping that it was going to be a shadow claw clone but it was not it's a bullet punch clone which is not helping uh lorantis out any um any more than uh than uh fury cutter so yeah it's just very spicy it's an xl as well i mean if you're gonna build xls there are far other um more important pokemon to prioritize um stronger grass types as well um and then we've got shadow machamp here <clears throat> it's very limited it's a b tier fighter um it's just very limited uh you've got chrysalias all over the place you've got giratinas all ghost types all over the place flyers um, it can put in work on the right team. It's just historically very, very much limited, uh, much better suited for the Ultra Premier League, um, where you don't have to contend with a lot of these titans of the Open Ultra League. And then we've got Mandibuzz, um, a C-tier dark slash flyer. It pains me to do this because Mandibuzz, the stat product is off the charts on this thing. If we need to get this thing the proper coverage move it needs, it needs sky attack. It needs a buff to air slash, perhaps. There are so many directions they can go to um, improve upon Manda Buzz. Once we get those improvements, look out. This could definitely easily float up the charts, guys. But for now, it is being held back by a subpar um, fast move and air slash and a subpar coverage move and aerial ace. And then we've got Meganium is a C-tier grass type. Um... It's just very limited. Uh, let's just say that. Very good stat product. Very strong Pokemon. And we've got um, Armored Mewtwo. Very good. That's a that's an OG classic if I've ever seen one. Holy smokes. Uh, but the meta has moved on. Um, there are just better psychic types, most notably Chrysalia, more effective. Um, but it has interesting uh, coverage, I will say. Uh, very tanky as well. Um, and then we've got Miltank. Miltank is a B tier uh, normal type. Again, much like uh, Licky Licky here, um, it's it's quite the investment, but it can be quite spammy. And it did get a buff with Rollout, so that cannot be denied. It has Body Slam, much like Licky Licky. It has some interesting coverage as well in terms of Ice Beam or Thunderbolt. They're just better bulky. I, I mean, out of the excelled um, bulky normal types. Greedent is by far the best one. Ha- out of these three, it has Body Slam, and it has Crunch, as well as Bullet Seed. Uh, so if you're going to build a bulky normal type, Greedent is the one to build, first and foremost. Uh, I do want you guys to understand that. And uh, moving right along to Alolan Muck. Um, very strong Pokemon. It has seen better days. Much more of a B-tier Pokemon. In previous seasons, it was definitely A-tier um, but it has fallen off a little bit. 
Um, and that is uh, due to all the Swamperts being run in response to all of the Charizards that are being run, um, as well as the uh, Ice types that have ground type coverage now in the meta. Uh, Steel types, Reggie Steel gives this thing um, nightmares, but still very useful, very good. And the same goes for its Kanto counterpart, um, Kanto Muck, same, same deal there. And we've got a Lola Ninetales, that's an A tier, uh, Charmer slash Powder Snow user. Very solid Pokemon. You just have to have the coverage on the Steel types and the Fire types, of course. Although with Powder Snow, it can put in the work, especially as a Shadow. So uh, yeah, uh, Alolan Nine Tails, A tier Pokemon. And we've got Noctowl. Holy smokes! I never thought I'd see Noctowl out of an S tier. <laughs> but we're talking Ultra League here. Um, not often uh, Noctowl. Um, gets outclassed by its other flying normal type being Pidgeot. Um, but yeah, if I'm going to run a flying normal type, I'm going to be running Pidgeot. The stat product is just slightly better. Um, so yeah, knocked out. Very interesting. Uh, it just doesn't quite get up there in terms of its uh, CP. And we've got Obstagoon. That's an A tier dark normal type. 100%. Very good. Uh, staple of the Open Ultra League. Very strong Pokemon. We all know uh, what's up with Obstagoon. Very strong. And we've got Pelipper here. Sort of a C tier. Um, water slash flying type. I would choose this over Gyarados, I will say. Um, but yeah, it's just... There are better uh, spammy water types and better flyers to use other than Pelipper. Although I do have one built, by the way. Uh, in case you were wondering. Berserker! C tier steel type. Um, very interesting because as a steel type, I want to be able to dominate fairies. And Berserker cannot do that with its um, ideal moveset, unfortunately. Um, very strong Pokemon, has a Shadow Claw, quite squishy on the squishier side, and has that nuke move of close combat for opposing Steel types. Can hit the Ghost and Psychics with a foul play, very interesting Pokemon, but the stat product is holding it back a little bit, and knowing when to throw that close combat, and um, yeah, um, it, it's good, but you have to have the right amount of skill and the right team. It's struggling in the stat product department. And we got Pidgeot here, S tier, 100%, such a dominant force in the Open Ultra League. It's a very strong Pokemon, despite having zero coverage on Steel types. That just goes to show how powerful Pidgeot is in this meta. It's either debuffing you or debuffing itself, um, and both are not good for you, unfortunately, because if it's debuffing itself, that means you're giving up a shield or getting one shot by a brave bird, and then you've got that bait move with the feather dance that lowers your attack, Pidgeot, quite lethal, and the Ultra League S tier for sure. And we've got Politoed and Polyrath. Um, both of these are D tier, unfortunately, they have seen better days. They're just better water types. If I want a water type, I'm going Swampert, guys. I'm going uh, Tapu Fini. If I want a fighter in terms of Polyrath, I'm going with one of the Swords of Justice or Scrafty. They're just better options, unfortunately. And uh, while we're on it, uh, Primarina also D tier. Not very good right now. Once it gets Hydro uh, Cannon, that could change. But for now, it does not have that, so it struggles. And we've got Reggie Ice. Um, not not the strongest of the Reggies in the meta, although very good. It could easily be C tier as well. I don't I don't understand why we don't see it as much. Um, I'll go ahead and say C tier for Reggie um, Reg Ice. Uh, very strong. Has access to Thunder. That is a legacy move. Has Focus Blast as well. Uh, can put in work, much like all of the other uh, the other the other two Reggies. And speaking of, that, that brings us to Reggie Rock, the best rock type in the entire meta, guys. This is an A-tier Pokemon. Any Pokemon that can address this monster and this monster is going to be very much valuable, as well as covering this ice types uh, as well. This Pokemon is very strong, very good. It actually beats Reggie Steel in a fresh matchup and even shields, and that is because... It wins CMP tie over Reggie Steel and can get off its super effective move before the Reggie. So this is a very strong Pokemon. 
Um, one of the only few rock types worth running in the entire meta, and that speaks volumes. Uh, and then, speaking of Reggie's, while we're on it, Reggie Steel S tier 1000%. There's no question about it. The bulk is off the charts. Uh, this Pokemon was amazing. Even after the nerf, it's still as strong, uh, not st as strong as ever, because there once was a time where this thing was absolutely going ham on the Open Ultra League. Uh, but the nerf brought it back down to earth a little bit. Still very strong. Excellent answer to uh, Pidgeot for sure, as well as shutting down Cresselia. Um, but yeah, this thing is amazing. And uh, Runarigus, uh, that is very spicy. Uh, enough said about that. That is not a viable Pokemon right now. Uh, and same goes for Scizor. Uh, very interesting. Um, they're very good in the limited metas, but um, with all of the flyers uh, running rampant, most notably Charizard, it, it can struggle a little bit, as well as all the Swamperts that are, are in response to all of the Charizards. That is why it struggles. And making our way to Scrafty. Scrafty is an A-tier fighting slash dark type. Very strong Pokemon. Very bulky Pokemon. It can absolutely sweep an endgame like you wouldn't believe. And making our way to Surfetched. Um, Surfetched is much best, um, best suited for the limited uh, Ultra Premier format. Uh, just struggles a little bit with the titans of the meta, most notably Giratina and um, Cresselia. Even uh, Cobalion puts in work against Surfetch, which should not be the case because it takes super effective damage from the counters. Um, but yeah, it's just Surfetch is far too frail. Um, but a, an excellent safe swap option. Very strong safe swap for sure. And making our way to Skarmory, much like Celesteela, um, there are just better Steel slash Flying types to use in the meta. Um, much like Altaria, it comes in well below the CP limit, but the stat product is very impressive uh, given that. Um, it's just, it, it runs Air Slash, guys. Anything that runs Air Slash is, is not going to be top tier. So the minute they buff Air Slash, we'll see. We'll revisit that, but for now, it's not not the uh, top tier steel or flying type. Um, and making our way to Shadow Snorlax as a B tier normal type, very strong. Um, I would go with a Greedon over Snorlax. Um, Greedon's just bulkier for sure, a uh, little bit more dynamic, um, more dynamic coverage. Uh, Snorlax, although it has the coverage on the steels and the darks, uh, whereas Greedent struggles in that department. So uh, still very strong Snorlax overall, for sure. And making our way to Steelix. Steelix, um, sort of a B-tier. Um, yeah, it's a B-tier uh, steel type. Um, Stunfisk is just better. <laughs> But Steelix has a different type of role. Um, it, its function primarily is to shut down uh, the dragon types. That is what it does best. Um, because it runs Dragon Tail and it resists dragon type damage. Uh, if you have those two in order, uh, you're going to be shutting down dragons like you wouldn't believe. Uh, but that's about it, really. Um, handles char well, Even the Charmers, I mean, it, it can... That steel typing in the bulk comes in clutch for those, but still, I mean, it runs Dragon Tail. And speaking of ground steel type, Stunfisk is an S tier steel type, one thousand percent. So this is an XL that you absolutely one hundred percent want to prioritize building, as well as getting it to best buddy because that is going to make it the most effective in the Ultra League. Um, so yeah, Stunfisk, we all know the story with Stunfisk. And then we've got Swampert. Swampert is an S tier Ultra League Pokemon. It keeps uh, Charizard in check. Handles the Steel types that we see a lot of. You got to keep it away from Pidgeot and Cresselia. Um, it even has some strong play up against Giratina because those Earthquakes with Stab really do put in work. So Swampert, yes, S tier 100%. And making our way to uh, Sylveon. It is, um, if I want a Charmer, I'm just going to go with A9. Uh, plain and simple. Um, but we'll see. If this thing can get um, steel coverage coming in the form of Mystical Fire, which it can learn. It can learn Fairy Wind. But uh, once we see some, some stuff like that, then we can talk about Sylveon. But until then, it's just another boring Charmer. 
Um, and it says it's it's not as good as a A9. So if you're going to run a Charmer, you want to prioritize Alola Nine Tails. Although if you don't have the resources, Sylveon is a great budget option. And then we've got Talon Flame here. Um, Talon Flame was once S tier, not anymore, guys. There's a there's a new fire flying type in town, and its name is Charizard. Um, Gosh, I almost want to say uh, B tier for Talonflame, unfortunately. Still very strong. That's nothing against Talonflame. It's just very slow with Incinerate. Um, very slow. Um, but Brave Bird is nice. Uh, you know, Talonflame is Talonflame. It's just seen better days. And making our way to Tapu Fini. Tapu Fini um, floats between S and A tier. Um... I'll go ahead and say A tier. Um, it's it's good, um, very good, very strong Pokemon. Um, yeah, yeah, it's an A tier for sure. And then we've got Togekiss here. Um, Togekiss, much like Sylveon, is just a C tier charmer. It needs Fairy Wind. It, that's what it needed for its calm day. It needed the um, Wall Rain treatment where it got. Uh, fairy Wind plus whatever else they wanted to give it for the charge move, but they didn't do that, so it's struggling. So it's an S tier, or excuse me, a C tier Charmer for sure. Toxicroak did get a buff. Um, C tier Pokemon. This Pokemon uh, serves a unique role. It, um, it's the fighter that beats all fighters in this meta. So, But the stat product is what holds it back, as well as struggling up against the titans of the meta, most notably Swampert, gets hard-walled by Giratina, Charizard. The, the, the top tier meta is quite hostile to it, but if you want to counter all other fighters in this meta, Toxicroak is your guy or gal. And then we've got Trevenant. Oh, Trevenant has seen better days. Holy smokes. This thing was once S tier. It's now B tier. That nerf was awful, unwarranted, unnecessary. Um, they didn't need to do that. So now having a six straight six cycle, rather than being on its uh, usual five cycle, it now can get edged out by Pokemon like Walrein, like Swampert in certain shielding scenarios. Um, forget about it. Uh, they didn't need to do that, but it can still do some things for sure. Still absolutely worthy of the B tier, 100%. Um, and then we've got um, Typhlosion. It's a D-tier fire type. They're just better options. Um, and then we've got Umbreon. Umbreon is an A-tier dark type. 100%. Very much underutilized. Shuts down uh, Giratina quite well. And one of the better generalists in the entire meta. That's another one much like Stunfisk where you want to get that thing to best buddy to be at its most effective. But if you don't quite have that best buddy... It'll still do the do the job, um, but if you can swing it, get that best buddy on it. Venusaur, uh, B tier, much like Trevenant. Um, Virizion, S tier, 100%. Easily becoming one of my favorite grass types to run. Um, I'm quite fond of Virizion, much like Cobalion. They both serve a very similar role, although Virizion shuts down Swampert. Uh, shuts down Reggie, Stunfisk. You got to keep it away from Charizard if you can do that. Verizian can absolutely put in work. And then we've got Walrein. Oh, man. It was once S tier when it was uh, slightly broken, but it is A tier now, even with the buff. Very strong water ice type. Um, probably, uh, probably the strongest ice type uh, right up there with Aurora's for sure. They both have similar roles. Um, very strong Pokemon. And then we've got Clefable. Got some love with Season 15. Very strong. An excellent closer now with the Fairy Wind addition to its fast move pool. This thing now has new life in the Ultra League. Uh, with the right shielding strategy and the right team, this thing can absolutely sweep a game in the Ultra League. This thing is uh, very much improved. And then we've got um, Cradily. Um, Cordelia's a C tier, um, grass slash rock type. If I'm going to run a rock type, I'm running Reggie Rock. If I want a grass type, I'm running, uh, Verizian. Um, pl 
plain and simple, but this thing is an absolute titan in the specialty cups for sure. Uh, just not one that I would prioritize building. If you're still building your roster, you want to have your eye on Reggie Steele. You want to have your eye on Stunfisk, Pidgeot, uh, Jellicent, Drapion, all of these up here. You need to be prioritizing before you think about anything that requires XL that is down here. Um, and then Galissapod, very strong. Um, still having uh, X Scissors holding it back a little bit. Much more of an anti meta Pokemon, but that speaks volumes. It's very strong. It's a B tier bug slash water type. And that is simply because it has play up against Chrysalia, has play up against uh, the fighters. Giratina with Shadow Claw, though it does struggle against Giratina, not going to lie. Struggles up against Jellicent a little bit as well, as it does get hard walled. Um, but handles Deoxys quite well, handles Wall Rain, shuts down Swampert. Uh, that is why it's much more of an anti meta Pokemon. Um, but on the right team, my goodness, can it uh, really shake up um, an opponent? If they're caught off guard with it, they're running. Um, bbml uh type stuff this thing can shut it down for sure uh same goes for uh haxorus um kind of c tier um yeah. i'm gonna say uh floats between b and c i'm gonna go ahead and say c tier it's just far too frail it really does belong in the uh, master premiere where i b do believe it will rule the roost 100 percent. make no doubt about that that's where it belongs and then we've got Kingdra, sort of a B tier. Kingdra struggles. It really needs something like a breaking swipe, much like Haxwis got. That's what I think uh, is best suited for Kingdra. Give it breaking swipe. And for the sake of time, I'm going to speed this along, guys. We only have a few left here. I don't want this thing to get too long. Uh, Melmetal, C tier. Nidoqueen is B tier. Um, still still quite strong. Has a, has a role in the meta, 100%. Uh, Alolan Sandslash also B tier right up right up there uh, as well. Uh, the drill run update was amazing for it. A strong anti flyer can uh, put in work up against the steals as well, uh, as well as shutting down these two. If you want to shut down Cresselia and Giratina in the Ultra League, this is one hundred percent what you need to be running for sure. No doubt about that. That thing shuts down those two Pokemon like you wouldn't believe. And then we've got uh, Skuntank here. Holy smokes, what is that? Uh, <laughs> sorry, I got distracted. Skuntank is a B-tier poison dark type. Uh, very strong Pokemon. Just takes a little bit long with poison jab. A little slow to charge those uh, charge moves. So you have to have the right shielding priority for it. And Galarian Weezing is uh, sl floats between A and B tier. I'll give it the respect of A tier. Very strong Pokemon. Has amazing coverage. Good bulk. Very spammy. Very strong with Fairy Wind and Brutal Swing. That thing is uh, quite good. I really need to get myself a good one. But uh, that about wraps it up, guys. I wanted I went went a little over, but I hope you guys appreciate the the uh, list here. Um, I don't want to run uh, too much longer than this, guys, but um, I really wanted to give you guys um, a good tier list for the Ultra League. These are the Pokemon you need to be prioritized, uh, prioritize building, prioritize the S and A tier first and foremost, and then work your way down. So hopefully this helps you guys that are still building your Ultra League uh, roster. And I always do enjoy um, doing these. So guys, I had a blast. I hope you all enjoyed. As always, I thank you for watching and keep up the grind. Thank you, guys.